Well, let's go back, and uh, we haven't said much about your great flying adventures and some really uh, impressive flying and, uh, adventures. You uh, you did some uh, work testing the Gigant, the immense German glider. Yeah, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah well, I can talk about it. Yeah. It's not a very short story, but the Messerschmitt Gigant was originally a glider. Could take up to 200 people on board. And the rumor was not really confirmed ever. That was during the Nazi regime. The rumor was that it was built for the invasion of England that Hitler had planned. And that would probably have been done if he couldn't see a new idea that he could beat Russia. And suddenly all the troops moved. We could see the trains move towards the east. Everybody asked, what's this for? And although he had made a pact with Stalin, he apparently decided to break that pact and attack Russia. And he was actually aware of Napoleon's disaster in the Russian uh, in the Russian areas during his attempt to unify Europe. So he wanted to avoid a two-front war that was Napoleon's problem. And in order to avoid that, he probably had to give, this is his general interpretation, he had to give, to abandon the idea for the time being to invade England. So what did you do with the gigant that was supposed to do that? Well, it got six engines and became, you could call it a motorized glider, but was really a big transporter. Had also a tremendous payload and of course was used in World War II still and I happened, when I first came to Messerschmitt during the war, I happened to be a test engineer and pilot on the Gigant. That was on Leipheim. So we made a lot of test flights to get this former glider into a reasonable transporter. And all kinds of things had to be changed. And we had all kinds of disasters, like dumb things like the cables were connected to the wrong ailerons. So instead of going this way, the airplane oh this way. Yeah. hits the ground and things like oh, yeah. that. Or that the aileron were frozen in flight because of metal against plastic and such mistakes. Mm -hmm. and so it was not a very easy, but still very interesting time. Then, as we understood it, Göring, who knew Messerschmitt since a long time, uh, told him, and Göring was of course head of the Luftwaffe, he told him, that he must concentrate now on the fighter jet, mm. which was just developed, which was a 262. Yeah. Tremendously successful development in contrast to other projects. You didn't have many steps it off from the very beginning, very successful. And really scared the wits out of the bombers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because accompanying 
fighters could, could not do anything with the 262. It was much too fast. I knew a gunner on the B-17, and as you say, it scared the wits out of them. They really... Yeah. <laughs> well, it so happened that the first flights on the 262 were done. This just comes to my mind. I didn't yeah. want to talk about That's it. That's okay. It's okay. Good. Uh, the first flight, actually the very first flight, was done on the same air, airway or runway that we flew in Leipheim. And it was a chief pilot of Messerschmitt. I think his name was Brendel. He was a very quiet, very knowledgeable, very good looking guy that all girls were working at Messerschmitt wanted to see all the time. But he was very conservative. And I remember that he didn't want to take off until this was done, until this was done. So day by day, which was good for us because then we had the runway for our gigant. Uh, but he finally decided that he would take off. And I was standing there watching it. And as he took off, there was this thunderous noise that I never heard, completely different from all engine noise. It was like a thunderstorm. Yeah. Enormous noise, and it took off like mad. And he went around, went to altitude, and made low passes, and always this thunderstorm noise was with us, which later on everybody got used to. <laughs> but when you hear it the first time, it was something new. I remember that well, well. But I, your question was on the message with Gigant. Well, Göring had asked Messerschmitt to concentrate on the Messerschmitt 262 and forget about the Gigant, give it to another company. So there were companies interested in taking it over. One of them was Luftschiff Bout Zeppelin mm -hmm. in Friedrichshafen on the Lake of Constance. Now, up to that time, maybe a few years before that, the head of Luftschiff Bau Zeppelin, which was a big uh, concern, a big company with many sub-companies, was Dr. Eckner, who was at that time probably the most popular person in aviation around the world, because that was actually long before Lindbergh. And 